Hello, my name is Carol Swain. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Conversations with Dr. Carol Swain. This is the show where we talk about faith, family, politics, unity, and whatever else is on my mind. Today, I have a lot of issues on my mind, including what it's like to be a conservative woman. I've been a conservative woman probably for the last 20 years, but a younger conservative woman. My guest today is Michelle Foreman. She is a Nashvillean who is an all around conservative woman. She knows how to hunt deer. She knows how to field dress the deer. She's uh, a state committee woman for the Republican Party. And she is also someone that played a very active role in trying to change Nashville. She's been a candidate for office. She's also a nurse and a law student and a mother and a wife and just all of those things. She does it all. And so help me to welcome Michelle Foreman to Conversations. So Michelle, you're a real Republican woman. I am, yes I am, Carol. And, and you're proud. Can. Well, you certainly are. I am impressed. I was very impressed when I saw on social media that photograph of you and your daughter uh, standing or sitting or with the deer mm -hmm. that you had taken down. And it had a lot of points on its antlers. It right? had seven, seven, which, you know, we would like to see at least 10, but um, it was a very big body deer and we knew we'd have a lot to eat off of that one and, and Ella was excited so so I shot it and and we field dressed it and we took it and had it processed and it's really good and I'm learning a lot about deer from you and you were so nice to supply me with venison what <laughs> glad glad to do it glad to do it there's plenty of it now Michelle uh, you've become involved in politics Mm -hmm. Are you following a family tradition? And I know your daughter Ella has expressed uh, her determination to become president someday. She said that. That surprised me. I know because Ella seems so shy. She is. <laughs> well, she's a woman with a, a, not a woman, but she's a young girl with a dream. She has a great role model. Thank you. We are not a family of politicians. As a matter of fact, uh, my father had an advertising and marketing firm for a long time, so uh, from a young age, I had been introduced to uh, politicians, presidential candidates, past presidents, all the way down to mayors, but it, it never really was impressive, or, or should I say impressed upon me, that that's something that we were a part of. It was just from the advertising and marketing perspective. I don't think I got interested in politics until I was in my 30s, and that was because there was so much going on that I felt like, well, wait a minute, some, we need to have some change. So maybe I need to learn a little bit more and see if there's a, a way that maybe I can affect some of that change. Now, when you decided that you wanted to learn more about politics, mm -hmm. what did you do? Did you take a course? Did you read the Constitution? Uh, what steps did you take to get involved? That is a great question because I know a lot of people have that question. I looked to see if there was a local race that I could help with, and it happened to be a school board race. And I learned getting into the trenches, it was blood, sweat, and tears, and I, and I mean that literally. I would go and I would put up yard signs in places that nobody can put up yard signs <laughs> um, because it's difficult. And I did everything that that candidate asked me to do, and I learned that way. I learned how hard it was, but I learned what it took. Um, to when I learned the issues and what people were really concerned about. So that's how I started. So did your candidate win? She did not, um, but barely. She did a great, great job. It was actually for a local school board election. And what she was able to do is springboard off of that to affect change in the community. She did a really good job. So that was the first campaign. Uh, after that, uh, did you get involved with other campaigns? I did, various and sundry campaigns, and finally I decided, wait a minute, I can do this. Is there uh, a need? Is there an opening? One thing I resolved uh, within myself was to prepare myself to run for an office if there was a need, if there was no other candidate that uh, was going to run or maybe 
maybe I felt like I was better qualified. Just at least be prepared. I, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. I know it, you do. <laughs> as you know, I made a bid unsuccessfully for mayor in a special election, came in number two, mm -hmm. uh, ran again in the general election, came in number three. We won't go into detail about how they uh, changed the voting machines and changed the ballot so that my name was on the second page, right. hard to find. But uh, I never saw myself as someone who would run for office. And as you know, there was a lot of people who pressured me to get in there, but I felt that there had to be someone who would articulate the conservative message. And I know that both of us are fed up with mm -hmm. politicians who lie. And very often, I hate to say this, Michelle, but it seems to be those people that more than anything else, they want to be a politician and they've lost all sense of what it means to be a statesman. I could not agree more. Uh, that seemed to have gone out the window. And I want to see that come back. Uh, they've lost the ability to behave like a statesman, but also what it means to be a servant. They're a public servant. And that is almost all but lost. It's totally lost. And it seems like people use that as a, the political office as a way to enrich themselves. Yes. And then once they get in power, they seem to be so, it doesn't matter which political party, mm -hmm. they're so afraid of offending someone or they're so afraid of being of not being reelected that they don't take courageous stances. And mm -hmm. so I find myself frustrated with candidates from both political parties. Mm -hmm. And I feel like something has to be done because we can't just continue down this path where we pour ourselves into elections, we elect people, the first thing they do is disappoint us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and going back to the conservative part of this, growing up as a conservative, we weren't out there. We weren't um, loud and we didn't protest and march, not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but we were conservative in all aspects. So when you, when you need someone to step up and be that person, be the people, that might be a little intimidating sometimes for a conservative. Well, conservatives have certainly become more vocal. They have. And in this 2020, you saw a lot of conservatives protesting. The thing I love about conservative protests is that we don't leave a lot of trash behind. <laughs> we don't break out windows. We don't loot stores. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, mostly we have speeches. And, you know, like, uh, I hope we are effective. At least when we do get together, I know that we encourage one another, and I think it's very important uh, to offer a support and for people to mm -hmm. know that they are not alone. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned something, especially around 2020, the year that we're in now, when a conservative finally decides that they've had enough, they will make a difference. We do make a difference, and it's because we're able to come together and move together as one mighty strike force. That is great. Uh, you make some excellent points. And when we return, uh, Michelle, I want you to talk about uh, running for office and a little bit about Nashville. We're going to break, and I just said when we return, we're going to learn more about Michelle, Nashville, politics, so stick with us. Conversations with Dr. Carol Swain is made possible by Cooper Steel a family-owned business that provides the steel fabrications for some of the greatest buildings across the United States. 60 years ago, Kenneth and Faye Cooper founded their company in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Cooper Steel believes in sponsoring Carol Swain because we believe she does. You build strong, you stand strong. What started as a vision and now a nationally recognized and operated company that remains true to its founders' Judeo-Christian values and principles. Cooper Steel is committed to excellence, responsibility, and community. Cooper Steel's motto is, build strong, stand strong. They treat their employees and customers like family. Thank you to Cooper Steel for standing strong with conversations with Dr. Carol Swain. Learn more about our generous sponsor at coopersteel.com. I'm back with my guest, Michelle Foreman. She's an all-American woman. Michelle, you ran for office, and I might say unsuccessfully this time, but you also had a win before because you serve on the state executive committee. Right. 
Yeah, tell our viewers a little bit about uh, your bids. Sure. So I ran for the State Executive Committee, GOP, in 2018. And the State Executive Committee is the governing board of the Republican Party. I had two other candidates, and this was the first time that I actually ran for office. This was a tough race. This is the 20th senatorial district that I represent, so it is really all around Nashville proper. And when you say that it's a tough race, I can tell you, you may not know this, but I ran for state party chair once. Yes. I was encouraged to do that. And what I learned was that it is a closed system. You know, they don't allow outsiders in. Mm -hmm. And you kind of fell into the category of an outsider. They had their uh, favorite candidates already picked and you kind of upset the apple cart. I did. We had people asking, who is Michelle Foreman? Where did she come from? Where I did she bear? come from? <laughs> yes, exactly. They had, they had a candidate that they had pretty much chosen and I outworked both of the women combined. They're, they are lovely women. They are. I worked hard. Well, you, you were younger and you had more energy and, uh, and so um, you had that working for you. And you recently ran for the State House and that did not turn out as well. Now that we know more about elections, especially in cities and states mm -hmm. controlled by the Democratic Party, and I'm not saying that Republicans don't cheat at times, they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us a little bit about that race for the state house. Well, it was actually the Metro Council. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, I'm ahead of myself. You're going to run for the state that house next, so you're running <laughs> for the House of Representatives. But okay, the Metro Council. Yes. And I, the feedback that I got was it was the most contested race in all of Metro, all you of gave Davidson them a County. Run for their money. When the state representative has to get involved, who represents the district, a Democrat, when the council person had been saying, you know what, I don't have anyone that's running against me, he already thought he was going to go ahead and assume the position again. And then the school board representative in the district has to get involved. They were, they felt very threatened. They, they did not know if they were going to win that race or not. And this was just feedback that I got. And they also, you were the victim of some dirty tactics. What were some of the dirty tactics it they used against was you? horrible. The things that they did, I, I've never seen anything like it, but it was well expected. Uh, we had folks that spread rumors on social media, um, just, just outrageous things like that. They would look at you to your face and they would smile and then they would go back and then they would post these kinds of things. And we're talking about people whose parents are pastors here in Nashville. Oh, don't tell me, don't get me started with that. I, I thought there is no excuse for you. Just run the race, just work hard, just do your job. But you made a good point in the earlier segment. Statesmanship, it's all but disappeared. And there's something about uh, Nashville, and yes. this probably applies to other cities too, where you've had Democrats in power forever, right. and mm -hmm. that would describe Nashville. Mm -hmm. You find that there are a lot of Republicans, uh, we call them rhinos, Republicans mm -hmm. in name only, but people that are grassroots that you think would be in your camp mm -hmm. because you're representing what are supposed to be their values, mm -hmm. but you find that they're either endorsing your Democrat, Republican, uh, Democrat candidate, opponent, right. or they uh, are trying to undermine you in some other way. Right. Now, Nashville has um, a very interesting and, uh, how should I say it, the history that we have is fascinating and it's corrupt. Throw out, it's, the, books <laughs> that, throw out the books that the uh, viewers need to they read. They need to read Secrets of the Hopewell Box. That's one really good book. And, and it describes the foundation of Nashville politics. Uh, and then it talks about how Nashville and Davidson County came together. And again, it's a fascinating read um, regarding corruption and really how we, we got ourselves on the map. The families involved, the whole nine yards. So so they need to read it. And the other book they need to read is Murder in Music City. Absolutely. And that book is about the birth of Metropolitan Nashville. Yes. And the city has always been controlled by people who were corrupt. Yes. And our elections in Nashville, as you know, are not, they say it's nonpartisan, mm -hmm. but only the Republicans pretend it's nonpartisan. The Democrats know that it's partisan. And so when I ran for mayor, I had the situation where 
um, the Republicans invited the Democrats, you know, to their events. And uh, the current mayor, the one who has uh, destroyed the city pretty much, mm -hmm. he was at Republican events, shaking hands with Republican women, Republicans supported him. Mm -hmm. And I'm not one to cry racism, so I'm not going to say it was racism. Not everyone loves me, even though I'm so lovable. Um, there may be a variety of reasons, but they said it's a nonpartisan election. The Democrats did not invite me to any of their events because they had enough sense to know that there is no such thing as a nonpartisan election. Not in Davidson County. Davidson County has been run by Democrats since its inception. We all know that. It is what it is. There was a time when Democrats and Republicans could live together, work together, uh, worship together. We've taken a turn, but I want to point we out... We used to have uh, shared values. We did. And I think when the Democratic Party nationally became more progressive, yes. you saw a lot of the candidates uh, change. And so, you know, it's just divisive everywhere. It, and it didn't used to be that way. Again, there was, uh, there was the statesmanship, there was the respect. Families were in church, families were together. Things are completely different now. But the reason why you were not invited to those nonpartisan events and to the Democratic events. I was born events, on the wrong side of the tracks, I think. <laughs> well, they knew that if you were in the runoff with David Briley, you would be the mayor. They and I'm knew not it. sure you know exactly what happened. Uh, when we return, I want to talk about uh, the Nashville Taxpayer Protection Act and just some of the things that are happening in Nashville. And so we're taking a break, folks. Stick with us. And when we return, more about uh, politics, Nashville, it's your city too. If you live in a democratic city, there's corruption everywhere. Those of you who would like to know what exactly our children are facing in their education system, this is a must read book. It will equip you and prepare you to make decisions about your child's health, about your child's education. So I want to encourage every one of you to grab a copy of Dr. Swain's book and join with me and Carol on the front lines in this critical time to eradicate the liberal abduction of our children. Welcome back to Conversations with Dr. Carol Swain. My guest is Michelle Foreman. Michelle, tell us about um, No Tax for Nash and the Taxpayer Protection Act and just what happened in Nashville. We don't have a lot of time that uh, led to these initiatives. Well, it, it came to be because we had a proposed 32% property tax increase by the mayor and people were outraged. We ended up with a 34% property tax increase and people were despondent, a lot of despair. What do we do? So the conservatives step up and say, we will take action. We uh, circulated petitions to recall the tax right. along with various and sundry things. Also recalling the mayor, which has never been done. A petition has never been taken out, but this is a response. Uh, by the people because they've been taken advantage of for so long they've had enough. Right and so it was we the people taking action. Uh, I was involved in that movement mm -hmm. to get signatures for the petitions and to recall the mayor they set an impossible threshold didn't they? It was nearly impossible and as I researched it was impossible it was we were not successful. That this is true <laughs> but we will be. Um, what we looked at was wait a minute, how do we make this more, uh, we'll make it more accessible for the people to put what they need and want into action. They need a recall, they need a redress, they need proper representation. And one of the things I know that you and Jim Roberts, who is an attorney in town, mm -hmm. and also some brilliant minds, other yes. minds that are involved, uh, we are involved in lowering the threshold so that you don't have to get as many signatures uh, to be able to recall the mayor. And so I think that's mm -hmm. very important. Um, I want to give you an opportunity uh, to speak to the uh, viewers, the ones that are local, mm -hmm. about what can be done because we had a petition for to reduce the taxes, mm -hmm. to repeal that. We had a Democrat judge that pretty much threw it out. So. Mm -hmm. 
what are the next steps for Nashville? What we decided to do, not to, re not to appeal the chancellor's decision, but to rewrite that petition, taking into account what the chancellor said, and we will go in and amend the charter as taxpayers. Now what we need to do is have enough signatures for a petition to put this on the ballot to vote on. So we're in the process of doing that, but we need to adjust and amend the charter to where it is doable to do what we need to do, which is keep our elected officials in check. And so that's where we are right now. And right, and it's important for viewers to know that when you are in the minority, and mm -hmm. in Davidson County, people that are Republican, conservative, we're in the minority, yes. but we do have an avenue for redress. And the uh, burden that Nashville taxpayers suffer, it's not just on conservatives, it's everyone. And mm -hmm. so this is a bipartisan effort for good government. Yes. We have uh, the city council, you know, voting themselves, you know, benefits, mm -hmm. just like Congress. Absolutely. Uh, very corrupt. Mm -hmm. And so we need to do everything we can uh, to bring about change. We do, and it is bipartisan, and we need to help our neighbors next door and our neighbors on the other side of the county. Yes, and uh, Michelle, I applaud everything that you do. Thank you. Uh, I love your daughter, Ella, and I think Ella will be, if anyone's gonna be a, a, a female president mm -hmm. from her generation, why not Ella? And uh, I've watched her grow up uh, at po political events, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I really um, encourage you to stay involved and uh, do everything you can to help educate people as you are doing. And if there's anything that we can do, you know, to make it uh, li likely or to make the next effort successful, then I want you to come back on the show to make sure that uh, the viewers know how they can support this effort. I will do that. And it's certainly the case that what happens in Nashville affects other parts of the country. And so you may think, oh, this is Nashville politics. No, if you live in a democratic area, I guarantee you that you're facing the same situation. So I will be back with more after this break. Stick with us. Demands for political correctness and mandatory race and gender diversity training have placed onerous burdens on businesses, churches, and nonprofits. Learn how to improve relations by educating your team with principled-based training that brings people together rather than driving wedges between them. Unity Training Solutions helps your organization build strong teams by respecting and harnessing individual talent Achieving your goals by providing viable alternatives to the divisive and counterproductive critical race and gender theories is our mission. Our expert facilitators and consultants bring greater harmony to workplaces and educational institutions by respecting everyone's civil rights and equality under the law. We encourage Americans to rediscover and re-embrace our national motto, E Pluribus Unum, out of many, one. A few of our core values and principles include no hidden agendas, respecting the differences of others, our citizens share more similarities than differences, and trusting in the traditional principles of hard work, integrity, and accountability. Our seminars are geared towards your organization, educational, business, corporate, as well as churches and nonprofits. Want to know more about how to strengthen your team? Knowledge is power. You can learn more about Unity Training Solutions at unitytrainingsolutions.com. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Conversations with Dr. Carol Swain. Michelle and I talked about issues that apply to local government in Nashville, but it also applies to you if you live in a city dominated by democratic politics. There are many cities that have only elected Democrats. It's important for you to find a way to express your voice. And one of the ways we're working on in Nashville is through uh, petitions, amending the uh, Metro Charter. 
These are things that you should examine. We have to hold politicians accountable. At the end of the day, it's we the people. We elect these individuals, whether we voted for them or not, they're supposed to represent us. So I, ur I urge you, I urge you now to get involved, find out what you can do. Local government is important. So until next time, be strong and tune in next week.